Hello and welcome to day 232 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Arileva. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude as we gather to read and meditate on your word on this 232nd day of our Bible in a Year reading. Thank you for this opportunity to draw closer to you and to grow in wisdom, faith and understanding. As we open the scriptures today, we invite your Holy Spirit to be present with us. Illuminate our minds and open our hearts to receive the truth you have for us. Help us to see how your word applies to our lives and give us the courage and the strength to live out these truths daily. Lord, we seek your guidance and your direction in everything we do. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, leading us in righteousness. Teach us to trust in your promises, to walk in obedience, and to reflect your love and your grace to those around us. We dedicate this time to you, Lord, asking that you bless our reading and our reflection. May it deepen our relationship with you and strengthen our faith and fill us with peace and joy as we walk in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 232. August 20th, 2024, 365 Days Bible Reading, Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 10, 2 Chronicles 11, 2 Chronicles 12, New Testament, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 19, Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 20, 15 to 24, Old Testament, NIV version, 2 Chronicles 10, 1 to 19. Israel rebels against Rehoboam. Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard this, he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon. He returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam and he and all Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, come back to me in three days. So the people went away. The, then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people? He asked. They replied, if you will be kind to these people and please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. He asked them, what is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, the people have said to you, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scorched you with whips. I will scorch you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam. As the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, My father made your yoke heavy, I will make it even heavier. My father scorched you with whips, I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for this turn of events was from God to fulfill the word the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through Ahijah the Shilonite. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? 
what part in Jesse's son? To your tents, Israel, look after your own house, David. So all Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still ruled over them. King Rehoboam sent out Adoniram, who was in charge of forced labor, but the Israelites stoned him to death. King Rehoboam, however, managed to get into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Second Chronicles 11, 1 to 23. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mustered Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 able young men, to go to war against Israel and to regain the kingdom for Rehoboam. But this word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the king of Israel, the, the man of God, rather. Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, this is what the Lord says, do not go up to fight against your fellow Israelites. Go home, every one of you, for this is my doing. So they obeyed the words of the Lord and turned back from marching against Jeroboam. Rehoboam fortifies Judah. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built up towns for defense in Judah. Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Beth, Zul, Soka, Adulam, Gath, Maresha, Zif, Adoraim, Lashish, Azika, Zora, Aijalon, and Hebron. These were fortified cities in Judah and Benjamin. He strengthened their defenses and put commanders in them with supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He put shields and spears in all the cities and made them very strong. So Judah and Benjamin were his, the priests and the Levites, from all their districts throughout Israel sided with him. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property and came to do Judah and Jerusalem because Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them as priests of the Lord when he appointed his own priest for the high places and for the goats and calf idols he had made those from every tribe of Israel who set their hearts on seeking the Lord the God of Israel followed the Levites to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices to the Lord the God of their ancestors they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon, three years, following the ways of David and Solomon during this time. Rehoboam's family. Rehoboam married Mahalath, who was the daughter of David's son, Jeremoth, and of Abihel, the daughter of Jesse's son, Eliab. She bore him sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaham. Then he married Maka, daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelomite. Rehoboam loved Maka, daughter of Absalom, more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all, he had 18 wives and 60 concubines, 28 sons and 60 daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah, son of Maka, as crown prince among his brothers. In order to make him king, he acted wisely, dispersing some of his sons throughout the districts of Judah and Benjamin and to all the fortified cities. He gave them abundant provisions and took many wives for them. Second Chronicles 12, 1-16 Shishak attacks Jerusalem. After Rehoboam's position as king was established and he had become strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law of the Lord because they had been unfaithful to the Lord. Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of King Rehoboam with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen and the innumerable troops of Libyans, Sukites, and Cushites that came with him from Egypt. He captured the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then the prophet Shemaiah came to Rehoboam and to the leaders of Judah who had assembled in Jerusalem for fear of Shishak, and he said to them, This is what the Lord says, You have abandoned me, therefore I now abandon you to Shishak. 
the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is just. When the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, this word of the Lord came to Shemaiah. Since they have humbled themselves, I will not destroy them, but will soon give them deliverance. My wrath will not be poured out on Jerusalem through Shisha. They will, however, become subject to him, so that they may learn the difference between serving me and serving the kings of the other lands. When Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem, he carried off the treasures of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of the royal palace. He took everything, including the gold shields Solomon had made. So, King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assigned these to the commanders of the guard on duty at the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards went with him bearing the shields and afterward they returned them to the guard room. Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the Lord's anger turned from him and he was not totally destroyed. Indeed, there was some good in Judah. King Rehoboam established himself firmly in Jerusalem and continued as king. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel in which to put his name. His mother's name was Nama, she was an Ammonite. He did evil because he had not set his heart on seeking the Lord. As for the events of Rehoboam's reign from beginning to end, are they not written in the records of Shemaiah the prophet and of Edo the seer? That deal with genealogies. There was continual warfare between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David, and Abijah, his son, succeeded him as king. New Testament NIV version, First, first Corinthians 14 1 to 19. Intelligibility in worship. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit, but the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you, unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you, since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the spirit, how can someone else who is not put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving, since they do not know what you are saying? You are giving thanks well enough, but no one else is edified. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. 
Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 20, 15 to 24. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouthful of gravel. Plants are established by seeking advice, so if you wage war, obtain guidance. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. If someone curses their father or mother, mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. An inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed at the end. Do not say, I will pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will avenge you. The Lord detests deferring weight and dishonest skills do not please him. A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? Amen. Lessons learned from Second Chronicles 10 The importance of wise counsel Rehoboam's decision to reject the counsel of the elders in favor of his peers' advice led to the division of the kingdom. This teaches us the importance of seeking and heeding wise counsel, especially when making significant decisions. The consequences of pride and harshness. Rehoboam's harsh response to the people, driven by pride and the desire to assert authority, resulted in the loss of most of his kingdom. This teaches us that pride and harshness can have severe consequences, damaging relationships and leading to unnecessary conflict. God's sovereignty. Despite Rehoboam's poor decisions, the division of the kingdom was ultimately part of God's plan, as foretold by the prophet Ahijah. This teaches us that God's sovereignty prevails even when human decisions lead to negative outcomes. Lessons learned from Second Chronicles 11. Submission to God's will. When Rehoboam planned to fight against Israel to reclaim the kingdom, God sent a message through the prophet Shemaiah, instructing him not to go to war. Rehoboam and his people obeyed, preventing further bloodshed. This teaches us the importance of submitting to God's will, even when it goes against our desires and our plans. Strengthening in obedience. Rehoboam's obedience led to the strengthening of his kingdom in Judah. This teaches us that obedience to God brings strength and stability, even in challenging circumstances. The importance of faithfulness. The Levites and priests who remained faithful to God in Judah were blessed, while those who abandoned God faced consequences. This teaches us that faithfulness to God is crucial for receiving his blessings and protection. Lessons learned from Second Chronicles 12 the danger of forsaking God. Rehoboam and the people of Judah forsook God's law, leading to their defeat by Shishak, king of Egypt. This teaches us that turning away from God and his commands leads to vulnerability and defeat. Humility and repentance. When Rehoboam and the leaders of Judah humbled themselves before God, acknowledging their sin, God showed mercy and did not allow them to be completely destroyed. This teaches us that humility and repentance can lead to God's mercy and averted judgment. Partial consequences of sin. Although God did not allow Judah to be entirely destroyed, they still suffered the consequences of their sin by becoming subject to Egypt. This teaches us that while God is merciful, there are still consequences for our actions when we stray from his path. Lessons learned from 1 Corinthians 14, 1-19 The Priority of Love in Spiritual Gifts Paul emphasizes the importance of pursuing love and desiring spiritual gifts, particularly the gift of prophecy which edifies the church. This teaches us that love should be the foundation of our pursuit of spiritual gifts and our goal should be to build up others. The value of prophecy over tongues in public worship. Paul highlights that prophecy is more valuable than speaking in tongues in a public setting because it edifies, encourages, and comforts the entire congregation. 
This teaches us to prioritize gifts that benefit others in the church and contribute to mutual edification. Understanding in worship. Paul stresses that understanding is crucial in worship, encouraging believers to speak in ways that others can understand and be edified. This teaches us that clarity and comprehension are important in our communication, especially in a worship setting, to ensure that everyone can benefit and grow. Lessons learned from Proverbs 20, 15 to 24. The value of wisdom and knowledge. The proverb highlights that while gold and rubies are valuable, knowledge and wise words are even more precious. This teaches us to value wisdom and understanding above material wealth, recognizing their eternal significance. Honesty in business. The proverb warns against deceitful practices in business, emphasizing the importance of integrity. This teaches us that honesty and fairness should guide all our dealings as God values righteousness over profit. Seeking counsel. The importance of wise counsel and planning is emphasized as victory is achieved through many advisors. This teaches us to seek advice and collaborate with others when making important decisions, knowing that wisdom, in found, wisdom is found in a multitude of counselors. Trusting God's providence. The proverb states that a person's steps are directed by the Lord, reminding us that we may not always understand his ways. This teaches us to trust in God's guidance, even when we do not fully understand his plans, and to walk in faith, knowing that he is in control. These passages collectively teach us the importance of seeking wise counsel, obeying God's will, pursuing love and understanding in worship, and living with integrity, humility, and trust in God's providence. They encourage us to prioritize spiritual growth, faithfulness, and righteousness in all areas of our lives. Faith Declarations from Second Chronicles 10, 11, and 12 I seek and I heed wise counsel in every decision I make, understanding that wisdom comes from God and those He places in my life. I choose humility over pride and kindness over harshness, knowing that these qualities strengthen relationships and honor God. I trust in God's sovereignty, even when circumstances seem unfavorable, believing that His plans will ultimately prevail. I submit to God's will, even when it challenges my own desires, knowing that obedience to Him brings peace and strength. I commit to remaining faithful to God, trusting that He will establish and strengthen me in every situation. I choose to honor God in all I do, knowing that faithfulness leads to His blessings and protection. I will not forsake God's ways, understanding that my obedience to Him is the source of my protection and my strength. When I fall short, I will humble myself and repent, trusting in God's mercy and forgiveness. I recognize that while God is gracious, there are consequences to my actions and I choose to walk in His ways to experience His full blessings. Faith Declarations from 1 Corinthians 14, 1-19 I pursue love above all else, making it the foundation of my life and the motivation for using my spiritual gifts. I desire to use the gifts God has given me to edify and build of others, especially through clear and encouraging communication. I commit to seeking understanding in my worship and interactions with others, ensuring that my words and actions bring clarity, comfort, and growth to those around me. Faith Declarations from Proverbs 20, 15-24 I value wisdom and knowledge above material wealth, recognizing that these are gifts from God that guide my life. I commit to honesty and integrity in all my dealings, knowing that God blesses righteousness over deceit. I seek wise counsel in all my decisions, trusting that God directs my steps and leads me on the path of His purpose. I walk in faith, confident that even when I do not understand His ways, 
God is in control and his plans are for my good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer in Jesus name amen congratulations if you said this prayer we're so excited to welcome you into God's family please kindly you go ahead right now send us an email let us know you give your heart to Christ someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith the email address is salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com that is salvation in Christ 101 at gmail dot com god bless you please remember to subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo Areleva. thank you so much for being here again today it's always a blessing having you here i look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow have a blessed day today i love you bye